Brad Arakey. Yeah, sure. So the, the basics of what we do is that we provide training to mm -hmm. groups of people from marginalized communities who wouldn't otherwise have the chance to represent themselves in, in the mainstream media. So it could be um, young people, it could be old people, sometimes people with disabilities um, or, or other things like that. Um, and we, we provide people with training and also a, a technical infrastructure mm -hmm. which will help them to report stories about their their day-to-day -day life um, and, and challenge media perspectives about them. Um, and we, so besides the journalism aspect, we also do some projects currently around improving governance by um, strengthening information flows between people in uh, uh, remote areas and local government, um, which is mostly happening in Africa at the moment, in various places. Okay, so you provide uh, <coughs> technology support, but yeah. also I guess that mm, you make some kind of education or change of culture of how yeah. to... Yeah, it, exactly, and I think it's it's often easier to focus on the technology and people mm -hmm. sometimes describe us as we're sort of a technology company or they say that the reason what we're doing is, is unique is because we've designed all of these complicated systems and that is an important part of it but at the same time I, I think some of the real strength in what we do is in the, the training that we give and the personal relationships that we build up with the people that we're, we're working with. Um, because as, as you said, the, the people's confidence is a real issue, um, particularly if you're from a, a, certain, um, a certain caste, a certain group of people who are not used to the idea that people value your story and your perspective. Mm. It can be such a useful thing for someone to almost come and just say, yeah, we're, we're listening to you. You have permission to speak now, and we think that you deserve a, a platform for your voice to be heard, um, and that, that's a really central part of what we do. So we can say that you provide technology, but also you train people to be journalists too? Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Uh, why do you think that citizen journalism is important today? I, I mean, I think there are a, a lot of reasons that it's important. Um, you know, one of the reasons, and something I, I think that's a really interesting that's happening more and more, is that there are some stories where people were just in the right place at the right time, you know? Mm, yeah. um, and there's only a, a limited number of professional journalists that we can have in the world, mm. right? Um, and, and they can't be everywhere. But what you're seeing now is these situations where someone just happened to be in a place where something amazing was happening whether amazingly good, amazingly bad. And now, so many people have you know, smartphones which are capable of recording high quality video, audio, whatever. And so we're capturing more and more of those moments. Um, a, a good example I would say that happened recently is everything from uh, everything that went on in Ferguson in America. Um, and as a result of that, you've seen so many examples of people documenting uh, police harassment and, um, and also the response to it, which has been a huge a coming together of people, really, a, across America. Um, and it's so important that we're able to document things like that, and it really means that, that as a whole, society becomes more empowered. And that's something that it's very, it's very difficult for that to happen if the people telling the stories are just a small group who seem like they're at the top of the pyramid, whereas when yeah. you have a big group who are working at the grassroots, it's a very different thing. Yeah, that's true. Um, which project in Radar do you think that has become well, the most mm, successful, the most gratifying for you? Mm. The, the project that's probably got us the most attention has been our Ebola reporting. Mm, yeah. Um, which, in a way, is a, a demonstration of the same idea of being in the right place at, at the right time. Um, I mean, of course, that sounds like a slightly strange way of talking about it, but 
the point is that we had already trained a network of reporters in Sierra Leone um, back in 2012. And because these people were already in place and had already received training, they found themselves suddenly at the heart of a huge story of international significance. Um, and they found themselves at the heart of this story at a time when other media organizations were not, uh, were not going in to cover it. Um, so, th so that was, um, on the one hand, that was one project that was really successful. Another project that's been really successful but has slightly lower visibility is about our um, SMS governance. Uh, projects. It's, it's Which one? Excuse me. Uh, it's it's an SMS governance uh -huh. project. So it's about improving information flows between people in remote communities and their locally elected government official by using text messages to track local issues mm -hmm. um, and uh, monitor the way that local officials respond to them. But the thing is that that, that project doesn't have a, a public journalism focus. So we we don't have a, a media platform for that because it's all about sharing information correctly uh, amongst a small group of people. So that's good. so it's working really well, but you'll just have to believe me when I say that because you can't, <laughs> you can't look it up online. Okay, um, one last question. What do you think that should be done to make this kind of stories, this uh, citizen journalism, more relevant in the world. More relevant? Yeah. Do you, do you think that it's not relevant? At the I mean, uh, it is relevant. Yeah. But, I mean, relevant for the uh, big mass media, these kind of things. Yeah, it, yeah. Sometimes I'm it becomes uh, um, relevant, for example, with Ebola, when it, it arrives to the uh, Western yeah. Uh, world. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. I, mm. So the way, the way that I see it is that w t to answer that question you sort of have to think about it as much from the perspective of the audience as from the perspective of the mass media because what mm. all of the TV channels and uh, newspapers and so on respond to really is what their, their audience wants in order to get ratings. I mean the thing is that we, ha because of the medium environment that we live in, we've got really used to everything being very high quality in terms of the production, you know? Mm. All of the websites that people use have to look fantastic. Video has to look really smooth, you know, and professionally edited. And so I think that there needs to be a process of the audience actually starting to accept that sometimes the most powerful story will not be the one that is really professionally produced, but actually something which which has the content, which has that right place at the right time sort of element to it. So partly as, as an audience, I think we need to start changing the way that we think about media. Um, and if it's clear that there is a, a demand for that, mm. and I think that, that that demand is increasing, then I would hope that the larger media outlets will start taking account of that. Um, but you know, one thing I think we should be seeing so much more of is, you know, African journalists in the Western media or Asian journalists in the Western media. We need to move away from this idea that where, wherever in the world the story is happening, it's probably being told to you by a white man, you know? Yeah, that's, that's true. Just, that's, that's true. Just yeah. silly. That's just silly and it needs to change. And when we start changing things like that, again, the idea of citizen journalism will be less strange. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. And yeah, for, thank you. For all the, what you have told us. I think that is very interesting, very okay. important. Great, I, I hope so. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you. you.